You're watching your local television network, TSPN, and now back to authors, writers, books, and beyond. This program also streams live on the web at TSPNTV.com and can be watched on demand at TSPNTV.com or TSPN TV's YouTube channel. And now back to authors, writers, books, and beyond. Hi, welcome back to the third segment of the Author Writer Show. I'm condensing that for you this time. I'm going to talk a little bit first um, about Clark's Corner and I own. Again, in our little three-block town, we have this wonderful community hub where my critique group meets, amateur fiction writers, and um, we critique regularly there. We actually go this year between Hine and Clark's. Um, I think this is actually, they're going into their seventh year at Clark's. Mm -hmm. We had nothing there before. We have literary events. My group hosts an annual formal literary read with a guest musician, and um, you pretty much think of it, they have it there now. They're growing and expanding there beyond their, it's not just a coffee house. It's also a, um, <clears throat> my daughter's college graduation for Sac State was held in the banquet room, and they have a gorgeous patio that the lovely Cynthia Turner, she's a new manager there, just redid. So we'll be critiquing out there Friday. <laughs> Give them a try. Yes, they have specialty coffees and they have wine and beer. You can book. Um, oh, yes, we also have a an informal annual open mic night there. My critique group is April 25th. So come and join us. Just sign up. Don't call the station about that. <laughs> Let me. <laughs> Please don't call the station about that. You can email me at Kathy Fuller, K A T H Y F. E L L U R E two at Juno J U N O dot com. Um, don't flood Sue with <laughs> a million <laughs> calls about that. But yes, you can join us for that too. So give them a try. Um, they have a chef that serves prime rib on Friday and mm. makes new meals. It's really a, Craig Clark has done an amazing job to give back to the community. Mm. So dynamite sandwiches too. Yeah, yeah, we meet there sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So join join them there, and um, if you have an event you want to hold, just talk to Cynthia. Now we're going to get into Mary is going to start off here and talk a lot about, and I mean a lot, telling you about her <laughs> workshop. Uh, I'm going to do two things at the conference. One is a talk, the brunch talk, and the title of that talk is The Tourist, the Expat, and the Native, mm -hmm. a Traveler's Guide to Writing Historical Fiction. I hope, though, that it helps more people than just those endeavoring to write historical fiction. It's about the ever-deepening pro ever process of immersion that you go through, and you probably know all about this, when you're discovering another place and time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the conceit made a lot of sense to me because I started writing while living abroad. Mm -hmm. So I hope the same conceit makes sense to other people as well. Mm -hmm. The workshop is called Out of the Woods, and I think anyone who has written for any period of time has had a story or two stories that they've just they've thrown away, they can't stand it anymore, and yet late at night or while driving the car, that story, the character, some aspect of the plot comes tapping you on the shoulder. And that's probably because there's something in there that's worth telling. There's a story there worth telling. And so the workshop is as much for me to practice this as other people, the tools and methods of, of finding that story within the story that you've thrown away. And, and, and seeing what's there. And a lot of that is throwing away your preconceptions of what you think you're writing about mm -hmm. and learning to actually recognize what's on the paper. Mm -hmm. It's often much more interesting what you're doing than what you think you want to do. Uh, and, and, but it takes some practice recognizing it. Sometimes it takes more than one set of eyes as well. So that should be, that should be a lot of fun. Oh, I think so. Oh, yeah. well, we're not teaching yeah. at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Yeah. Just tell your class, yeah, I'll be right back. back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and both, yeah. both of these books, too, there was a time when I threw them both away. Mm -hmm. you know, um, the, Talk the, about the second The book. second book, uh, Reliance, I, it, right now it's called Reliance, is out in a year, in 2016, and it takes place on the Mississippi River about 10 years after the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And that time isn't much written about, at least not in, in fiction. War is sexy and war is glory, mm -hmm. and it, so is, it seems to be the obvious plot line. But I was really interested in the dramas that happened, the political dramas and the small town dramas that occurred <coughs> 10 years after the war. It probably didn't hurt that I started writing that book 10 years after another war and, and was recognizing a lot of the parallels between that time and place and my own. 
And, uh, the main character of that story is a 13-year-old girl with a wine-stained birthmark all the way down her body. Uh -huh. And if you're a woman in the 19th century, uh, what, is, what are your assets but your beauty? Yeah. So she has to be educated. It's a coming-of-age story on one hand. Mm -hmm. It's a fall, story of a fall on the other hand. And it's a story of this place, <coughs> how these people learn to live together again or don't. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. So that's that out in, in next May 2016. Okay. Something to look forward mm -hmm. to. Yeah. You can come back and tell us about it. Then. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And get ready to launch it. Um, do you want to share a little bit about what you're teaching? Well, I'm going to be doing a workshop in, well, basically the beginning, so the first page and a half of, uh, of a novel. And the, because everyone will have an opportunity to have their work critiqued, I, I'm limiting it to 10 people, and there are only two spots left. Uh -huh, okay. And it, it has to be limited so that we can really go in depth. I think that uh, obviously the beginning is terribly important. It's the first thing a uh, prospective editor sees, uh, an agent sees, and, and the reader. And so it has to be a grabber. So that's what we're really going to work on in, in depth. How often do you go, you read a book all the way through, and you get to the end, and you say, and then you go back, yeah. and you see yeah. in that, those first five pages, everything that might unfold. Yeah. It, you really. know, even just a suggestion or an image, and that's, that's hard to remember when you're just starting out. And it's a bit intimidating when you're just starting out, yeah. too, to think that you have to have all Actually, that. Actually, it's best not to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> just get it out. The truth. Get started and then <laughs> oh, sure. think about it later. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Genevieve, you want to tell us a little about the conference right. attendee experience and some exciting things in your life, too? Oh, um, well, I've gone to other conferences before, which is, of course, how I met Lucy Sana and learned about Gold Rush. Um, what I like about the Gold Rush Conference is it's kind of like family, because a lot of us know each other. But it's also extremely supportive of writers, no matter what level of experience you have. It's not about pitching. It's not about networking with an agent or editor. It's about focusing on the craft. And so it's just a very supportive weekend so for writers. So less pressure. Yes. Yeah, a lot of learning. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it's a TLC. Yeah, it, it is, is very much. Place. Yeah, uh, that's what I've heard you refer to it before, Tony, as the TLC boutique conference. Yes, because you limit yes. to fifty yeah. attendees, yeah. Yeah. so that they get that personal interaction. Yeah, and that's, that's true. A, that's absolutely true, and it makes a big difference. Yeah, uh, it's not competitive. It's no. uh, you're only competing with yourself, trying to yeah you know, better yourself. This. Yeah. And you have some exciting news. Do you mind sharing? Oh, um, I'm attending a couple of other conferences. Uh, in New York, in June, I'll be at the second annual um, The Writer's Hotel mm -hmm. Masterclass, which is a week of workshopping and literary events. And here I just said not to pitch, but you get to meet agents and editors. Mm -hmm. And actually, I, I initially signed up because Stephen Dunn is teaching poetry, and even though I'm not a poet, I love wow. Stephen Dunn. So I said, anyone who has Stephen Dunn, it can't be a bad conference. And then um, in September, I've been accepted to Bread Loaf Sicily, so I'll be spending a week in Sicily. Congratulations. Thank so you. Exciting. That's exciting. I'm excited, yeah. yeah. I'm really excited. We want mm. pictures. We want to hear all yeah. about yeah. it. How much yes. time are you actually going to spend writing in Sicily? That's ah, it'll be. Fun. Have you been before, or is it? Oh no, I'm always stuck at home. <laughs> are you going to take more time and see? The Unfortunately, it's during my school year, oh, okay. so they sure. might notice if I'm <laughs> yeah <here>. teaching there <laughs> because our school year starts at the beginning of August. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. First graders can handle themselself. Yeah, yeah. They'll be fine. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. Actually, I'm teaching fourth grade next year, oh, so well, missions yeah. are coming up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, missions. Oh, and a whole new year. year. I love then, fourth too. grade. I'm so excited. I, I taught fourth grade before. I see a book in the future. Yes. yes. <laughs> I think the experience is going to yeah. um, birth something special. Yes. Well, actually, yes. one time on a, a mission, a friend and I like to go mission hopping because hmm. we teach... Uh, I used to teach fourth, and she teaches fourth, and there was this... I can't remember the title right now, but there was this darling self-published book a little girl who was in fourth grade at the time, her folks took her to every California mission, and she wrote a mystery novel, and every hmm. chapter was set oh, in goodness. a different mission. So I think that's a great oh, mentor text for kids. Oh, what a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. starling. There's, there's a new book out about the Gold Rush area up here called The Adventures of Pearly mm. Monroe, written, written by the lovely Marcy Scyther, mm. that is an actual story, a historical figure that was very little known about. And I don't want to... 
um, give too much away, but you can um, look into that here locally. Um, she's been on the show, too. Wonderful, wonderful book. Um, I just What's the title again? Um, the Adventures of Pearlie Monroe. Look and it's about um, slaves, and it has a, just a heart-wrenching, mm -hmm. wonderful storyline. So before we break, and we have one more segment, it goes fast, huh? I tell everybody that. <laughs> don't believe me. But um, we'll, we'll be breaking in about a minute and a half, so we're going to kind of wind down a little. In the last segment, we'll be sharing anything that we feel we missed sharing with you. They can give you websites, and if you'd like to follow up on anybody, you're welcome to contact the station. And if they give you a website or an email, you can also um, contact my guest that way. And so I wanted to mention one more thing about Ralph before I go with this story, because he's also a conference past attendee. Yes. And a lot of us workshop with Antoinette monthly and work on each other's books. You've both worked on two or three of mine. Yes. And it's invaluable. Um, what happens after the conference also. It is, there is something wonderful that happens in the conference where you come and you learn the real truth about writing, <laughs> not what you always thought. And um, you, also, you also make connections that are really important. And I'm not just talking about networking, but you make new friends new and friends, writing companions. Yes. And as um, Genevieve said, it's a family. So <clears throat> come back and hear a little bit more about that and before we close. And um, um, I think of anything in the meantime on our three-minute break, I'll add it to the last segment. Thanks a lot. See you a little bit. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TNN.